Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are here in uh, orbit again with uh, our uh, Artemis 4M, our uh, experimental HAB module, and the Tremonia Station in low Earth orbit, doing its sciency thing. Um, I was actually I was going to radio in the yeah. What do you have? Two science. Yeah, they don't have any real useful data to work with. Uh, I think I took a crew report somewhere. Uh, did I not? I, I guess I did not. Oh, well. <laughs> no big deal. Anyway, I've transferred over pretty much all the available resources that we could uh, wedge into the poor thing. Oh, there's some lithium hydroxide. I could probably move. Uh, nope, that's all full. Is your scrubber on? Let's, uh, go ahead and turn on your scrubber. That, that'll make some kind of difference, I'm sure. Okay, fair enough. So I've now I have transferred over all the uh, available resources that could be transferred, everything from the HAB module, which is now pretty much empty. We just need to rotate some of our crew around. So we're going to uh, go ahead and get somebody out of the Artemis. There's our crew hatch. Let's pivot to a place where we can see it better. Ah, come on. There we go. Crew hatch. Uh, I think Bill is our resident scientist. Let's uh, scroll over down here until we find him. Nope, Bill's our engineer. Diana is our scientist. So, Bill, EVA, it's uh, your turn to spend some time out here. Let's get you into this lab. We'll have to find a door at some point, I assume. Uh, I neglected to bring any tools up this run. Otherwise, I would certainly go around this station, remove some of the RCS thrusters, get our part count a little lower, uh, definitely connect some struts between our HAB module and our lab module uh, down here, and uh, remove some of these excess port uh, structures. But uh, I guess we'll have to do that on our next uh, shuttle flight. We can bring far more cargo containers in space up on a shuttle than we can with the Artemis. We're really kind of limited to just those two cargo containers uh, in the access hatch, which is uh, two more than any previous generation of Artemis has ever been able to handle, so I, I guess it's a net positive uh, all in all. Anyway, but uh, this was just a test flight. It was kind of bare bones. We're just trying to work uh, some of the kinks out of the system. We have isolated a few that we do need to fix. All right, Bill has been moved from the Artemis to the lab. Yeah, who's who gets to come home? Um, Dimitri, what is your what, are you, what job do you have? I assume everybody up here is a scientist. Yeah, let's take Dimitri home. We're actually probably going to start uh, vacating the crew from the station unless we can get uh, some new science experiments unlocked, which I don't think are on the menu for quite a while, actually, if at all. I think we may have uh, maximized our science instrument loadout. But uh, what we can do is pull some experiments from other places, store their data, bring them to the station, have them dock, and you know transfer their science over here that way which uh, might be the option that we have left for this whole thing. Grab that hatch and board. Excellent. All right, well, it looks like the uh, routine portion of our mission here is done. I am just going to, uh, well, they've been up here like less than a day. I don't think we really need to top off the supplies in our Artemis. I have emptied its primary life support tank, and of course everything from the HAB module has been emptied out give these guys probably about a, I don't know, I would say 300 days. I thought there were only two people up here, but I guess I'm wrong. So it's three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So there are a lot more people on board than I initially thought there were, and that's very interesting. Had shading. That's interesting. Anyway, we're not going to deal with that right now. We're going to put the Artemis into a lower orbit so that we can satisfy our contract uh, that is basically paying for this whole test run. I mean, not really. We're going to be at a negative for this 
no matter what, because we blew up our first test vehicle. Why can't I? There we go. Click. Undock. I hope we're still controlling from the Artemis. Let's yeah, pull ourselves very gracefully away from the station and uh, get ourselves inserted into a low orbit where we're going to have to hang out for about 12 days uh, in order to get paid. And then we will not quite break even on this, but, you know, it's better than nothing, I suppose. And away we go. How's our power draw with just four panels? Uh, what does our life support situation look like? Uh, 25 days. 22 days, really, which is fine. We'll be, we'll be down long before then, hopefully. Ah, electric charge is staying topped off, even with uh, everything going the way it's supposed to. Even with our scrubbers running. That's pretty good. Is this scrubber running? But yeah. yeah. So it looks like we're all powered up and still... Uh, generating power, and we're even off plane. That's even better. Activate our comms just for no apparent reason. Does that affect anything? Nope. Still topped off. Even better. I just wonder what the drain is going to be like when we get down to a uh, lower orbit. Or what the drain is going to look like when we're on the nighttime side, and uh, if the panels are going to be able to generate enough power to fully top off the battery before uh, we hit the darkness again. Be interesting to see. Anyway, we're going to rotate ourselves around. We're still pulling away from the station, not too worried about that. Uh, I should have started slowing down a very long time ago, but the good news is, is that is going to ullage in our service propulsion engine, which I don't think I ever bothered to turn off. Nope, showing active over here. Good enough. I mean, we're up to 3287 meters per second since we emptied all the goodies out of here. And ignition. Man, if you could gimbal a little better, that'd be really great. I guess it is a little difficult when you've got exactly that much mass uh, working against you. But the station will fade away cleanly in the background. We'll just... Uh, Plot ourselves a node here at our perigee to bring our resultant orbit down, and then uh, warp around to the dark side of the planet, which I hope you guys can still see this. All right, we're about four minutes out from the node. We do need to do an about face, so uh, even though the burn's only going to take us about 32 seconds, I figured I'd go ahead and get us turned around now. Why not? Yeah, it does maneuver a lot easier with... Uh, that have module mostly empty, but I still think we can make some serious improvements to it. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and light it up now. We just need to bring that uh, apogee down to below 300. Or right, really, it's 325. But yeah, you know, who's being nitpicky? Like I said, it just has to be below 325, so 302 by 225 should be just fine. So let's uh, bring up our resource panel here and just uh, make sure our batteries don't deplete on the nighttime side. Looking good, even being off plane, we're uh, keeping topped off, staying charged, and staying fresh. Yeah, big apologies for the uh, epileptic attack here, but uh, I will switch out to the map view to do the uh, rest of this fast forwarding as we get to our uh, contractual uh, obligated 12 day stay in orbit. And just a uh, quick double check. Yeah, we've got 20 some odd days of life support left. No big deal. Just a few more days to warp through and then uh, we will have satisfied this requirement on our contract. We can bring them home and uh, still not break even, considering it took two launch vehicles to get this thing done. Bingo. 12 days. Let's bring them home. All right. Well, uh, let's take a better look at the map view. I would probably like to bring them home on... Daylight side, although a 
splash down and it looks like there's going to be no water on that side anyway we're going to make our maneuver here at apoapsis so i just have a very small correction to make this does make things a whole lot easier i must say how long we got before that uh, 42 minutes. Alright, two minutes out. Nighttime side, I hope you guys can still see this okay. Yeah. Ignition, and I'm just going to do this burn mostly manually by watching that uh, periapsis figure until we get to something uh, quite reasonable. All right, engine shut down. Periapsis is at 55 kilometers. Uh, we're just going to double check here. Yep, um, nothing. I mean, there's a lot of water in here and a lot of poop, but we don't really need any of that. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, jettison, undock, and then uh, turn our RCS and our stability control back on. Oh, nope, other way. Do not redock. Do not redock. Actually, if you could pitch yourself above it a little bit, that would be uh, be pretty good. Go. And... Uh, the all-important task of uh, arming our parachutes. This will be our first uh, actual, like, loaded test of parachutes where they're coming in at speed and not just falling down from above the launch pad. No big deal. So, uh, hopefully they'll work. I believe I gave them the same settings as the uh, Artemis 3 and Artemis 2, which all proved to be uh, pretty good. So... We'll just let the hab drift itself away. It's only a few hours being crammed into this uh, tiny capsule uh, before they'll be down on the ground and back to some normal gravity. All right, there's a uh, physics ending. Nope, turn the other way, please. Make sure you've got a good supply of N2O and MMH. Yes. Is there any aerosene in here? We need to transfer over some fuel out, out. And if you could really just hurry up with that, that would be fantastic. Okay, I know there's fuel tank up here too, but it uh, looks like it's topped. So we're going to go ahead and stage off our service module. Bring that down here. Other way, again. And we can go ahead and enable the RCS ports here. Oh boy. Um, ejection force was not quite enough. Oh, come on, drag. Oh, that scraped off some heat shield, I'm sure. <laughs> At least it's behind us and certainly won't pose a threat or go screaming past us at extraordinarily high speeds uh, later. So we're actually going to wait until we get into the wind a little bit more. We need to rotate ourselves around, make sure the capsule is oriented correctly for when we turn descent mode on. And maybe I should check to see where we're going to come down. Oh, hey, yeah, I forgot we've got this little antenna we forgot to turn on. It's got like a million meter range uh, being not activated. So where are we? Backspace. That's us. Uh, all things going well. well. Looks like we'll land uh, somewhere here in the Middle East, Iran, Arab Emirates. Or maybe we'll hit North Africa, depending on how much drag we can induce here. Is that our HAB? Yeah, I think that's our HAB module down there. There's our service module. Oh, that's just pretty. Nope, wrong button. There it is. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and hit the physics warp and try to bring them home. 
And this is the uh, obligatory sped up footage of a re-entry, for which there's really not a whole lot to comment on. We've uh, brought this particular capsule home um, a couple of dozen times at this point. And there's our service module speeding past us and then uh, starting to explode. So I will reduce the physics warp so, so I can kind of uh, enjoy all of the explodey goodness. Yeah, and there it is starting to break apart as all the little bits uh, start to pop. We haven't even started generating like heating effects or anything here on the uh, command pod, so it's a little alarming how quickly those things are going up. And there's the habitat module starting to break apart. But it looks like it's uh, all done with the explodey bits now. So we'll get back to the physics warp until we start to generate some actual heat. We'll switch it into descent mode. I think we've actually slowed down enough to where we will not have a uh, skip re-entry. I really doubt we'll even bring the uh, Apogee forward of us at this point. But as our contrail starts to develop, uh, the command pod burned through its uh, reserves of uh, MMO and uh, N2O extraordinarily quickly. So after just like a few minutes of this, I started to notice that it was leaning off kilter here. Yeah, that's because all the roll control is done by the command pod. So we're going to have to turn off descent mode or we're going to end up uh, grossly uh, misangled, uh, which just really means exposing the crew to a higher G load. It's uh, unfortunate, but uh, I think they can handle it. Um, you know, Jev and Valentina were certainly tough enough to put up with 9G re-entries. These guys can stand about the 8.5 or so that we're going to put them through. But uh, we come out the other end just fine. Just a quick double check, make sure the parachutes are armed while the RCS system just uh, sits there burning aimlessly, which is fine. The more fuel we uh, put out through the ports, the easier it is for us to slow down under the weight of these chutes and uh, have a nice, comfortable touchdown. So the drogues are out, and they'll hit full deployment, and then the primaries will fire. They'll open up almost instantly. Uh, it's a little low for my comfort, so maybe I didn't set this up exactly like the old Artemis. Uh, we'll run a crew report because I was bored, and here comes touchdown. And we're down. That's a, uh, a quality touchdown, I'd say, and a uh, quality contract complete. Anyway, uh, we've got our list of changes that need to be made to the system, and then I think it's safe to say that we can go ahead and rate this thing for Mars. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then. See you later.